all that you need. Come on, give him a big praise in the house. Amen. Thank you. If you're ready for the word, shout, I'm ready. If you'll stand for the reading of God's word, that's just my custom. I feel like teaching tonight. Who's hungry? Anybody hungry for the word? I want you to take your Bibles out tonight. If you've got them with you, you can go to Isaiah 43. If not, you can, uh, you can follow along on the screen. We're also going to be looking in the book of Job tonight, Job 33, 14. I'm excited about preaching and teaching. And I remember 2018, we are crossing over into the new. Who's ready for some new things to manifest in your life? We talked about what new means in the Bible. It means new doors, new seasons, new opportunities. Come on, new strategies and new orders. That means things that have been dis in disorder, God's going to get them in order. How many of you are ready to have a year that's in God's order? Hallelujah. So I want you to look at Isaiah 43, 19. The Bible said, Behold, I will do a new thing. Somebody say new thing. When is he going to do it? Now. Hallelujah. Anybody ready for a new thing now? Can I ask you again, anybody ready for a new thing in 2018 now? The Bible said it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? God wants to do a new thing and he wants you to know it. He said, I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. I read that and, and it just encourages me to expect the unlikely this year. But then look at Job 33, 14. This is where I hung my hat for a little while last week. It said, for God may speak in one way or another. Yet man does not perceive it. What I want you to understand is God speaks in different ways. Sometimes we don't always hear it. But how many of you want to hear and understand every way that God speaks so you don't miss anything? I'm teaching, revealing the mysteries of 2018. Slip up your hands and let's just ask God to lead us. Father, I pray today that you'll just use Jim Rayley. I'm your vessel and I'm willing. God, nothing within me tonight is itching for glory. I want to give it all to you. And I pray tonight that I would be clear and concise and I will encourage your people and I will say only what you won't say, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. Devil, I break every influence that you have on the hearts of people, on the minds of people. I declare that they will get in this word and claim every promise that is rightfully theirs for this year in Jesus' name. If you love the Lord, give him a clap, amen, and a shout. You can be seated. One thing I know about God is God speaks. He still speaks in 2018. And Job said he speaks one way and then he speaks another. God speaks through his word. God speaks through his prophets. How many believe that God still speaks prophetically? Amen. God speaks through times. He speaks through seasons. He speaks through the constellations. He speaks through the sun, the moon, the stars. Uh, he, he even speaks through numbers. If you study God's word, you find out that numbers mean something again and again and again. You talk about the number 12. The number 12 is a number of government in the Bible. There are 12 disciples. There are 12 gates. Again and again, you read about the number 12, the 12 gates of heaven. Just time and again, you, there's 12 tribes. There's just so much that tells you 12 is the number of government. 10 is the number of testing. The 10 wise and foolish virgins had their preparedness tested. We tithe. 10%. Come on, somebody. 10 is the number of testing you study and read again that the number of eight or seven is the number of rest. The Lord created the earth on, in six days and on the Sabbath day he rested. That's God's perfect number. It means it's complete. It means we're resting in him. And then the number eight represents new beginnings. We study all through God's word and I've cited so many examples of the fact that eight is the number of new beginnings. And here we are now in 2018 and we're claiming some new beginnings. Anybody claiming a new beginning? Hallelujah. That means if it's new, you don't have a reference point. It's something you haven't seen before. So this year, don't look for God to remodel an old year. Don't look for God to remodel an old season. God said, I'm about to do some things you've never even seen before. Okay, I got a few people with me. God said, I'm about to do some things you've never even seen before. It's going to be beyond what you're thinking because that's the way God does it. God does things new. Eye hasn't seen and ears haven't heard the things that the Lord has prepared for them that love him. Anybody love him tonight? Amen. 
So I believe this is going to be the year of the new. Now, we know that this is the year 2018. That's on the Gregorian calendar. That's our calendar. That's the calendar that we go by. But on God's calendar, his calendar is the Hebrew calendar. We switched 2018 years ago to this calendar, but God stayed on his. So I'm always interested in finding out where God is on his calendar. How many of you want to know where God is on his calendar? Because I want to know where I am on God's calendar. So it's the year 5778, and we've been talking about that in a quick review. If you bring up the, the 78, the A in Chet, remember we just covered that briefly over the last uh, few services, but I just want to remind you that this is the year. The Chet is the seven. Now, remember the numbers are alphanumeric. That means that their, their numbers interchange as letters and their letters interchange as numbers. But the writing, all this writing, every Hebrew letter is hieroglyphic. That means it looks like something. And we're in the decade of the sevens right now, 78, because Jewish people read from right to left. And 78 is the, is, the, is the decade of vision. You see these two eyes here. These eyes look exactly like eyes that you and I would have, and it tells us that this is the year and the season and the decade to see things. I don't know about you, but I want to see things that I've only heard about. The Lord said, this is a time for you to see some things. This is a time for us to see the supernatural, to see the hand of God, to see open doors, to see opportunities, to see God save our children, to see God move mountains. I don't want to just hear about God. I don't want to just hear about what he can do. I don't want to just hear that he's good. I don't want to just hear that he can do the impossible. No, I'm in a time now where I want to see what I have never seen before. How many of you got some things you want to see in this nation? next season. How many of you got some things you want to see it with your eyes? You want to see it with your eyes. I don't want to just hear about it. I want to see my financial situation turn around. I want to see my season shift. I want to see my family saved. I want to see miracles in my day. Make a little noise if you're ready to see some things. But also, precious, we look at the number eight. That's the letter Chet, the number Chet. Chet actually means door or doorway, and we see here a doorway. And what that says to us is this is the year of the doorway. This is the year where we walk into what God has promised us. But you got to make up your mind that you're going to hear this with ears of faith. This isn't a magic formula. This isn't something that, 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 that is cosmic in the sense that we're trying to manipulate you in any way. No, what these are, I believe, are biblical markers. They're places that the Lord gives us and signs that the Lord gives us an opportunity to launch out and place our faith in the fact that we will, we will A-N, A-N is the word see, we will see with our eyes, it's the word eyes or see, we will see open doors this year. We will see open doorways this year. Whatever doorway God has for you, you're not going to miss it. He's going to give you the ability to see it. Hallelujah. God's going to open doorways for you, not doors because doors can slam back in your face. So the emphasis of the chat is not just the door, it's the threshold. It's crossing over the threshold and there's no door on the doorway. That means nothing's going to slam back in your face. Have you ever gotten close to something and you felt like you were almost there and then it just slammed in your face? But the Lord said this is not the year that things are going to slam in your face. You're going to have clarity. You're going to come to your door and that door is going to remain wide open. Hallelujah. I want you to give God praise for doorways this year, for thresholds that you're going to cross over. Thresholds represent limitations, you see. If you get to the threshold of a thing, they say that's usually as far as you can go. But in Jesus' name, bride of Christ, you're going to go over the threshold. If you feel like you can't cross it yourself, you're the bride of Christ. The groom's going to pick you up and take you over the threshold in Jesus' name. And you're going to go through your door. Who's ready to go through some doors this year? Come on. I'm ready to go through every door that God has for me. 
But as I was studying this a few weeks ago, and I was studying Hebrew scholars, they say that this door right here actually represents the door and the mantle or the lintel where, uh, of where the Jews would have applied the blood over the doorpost and the lintel in the Old Testament when the death angel had come through the camp and, and all the firstborn were killed, but those who had the blood covering their doorpost and lintel, the Bible said, when I see the blood, come on now, I will pass over over you. And the Lord began to speak to me about this. He said, these doorways are covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, some people have this tendency to walk through their doorways and they're constantly looking back, waiting for the enemy to pull them out of their victory, to pull them out of their blessed place, to pull them out of their purpose, to pull them out of where I brought them to. He said, but this year, when they cross that threshold, it's covered with the blood. The doorway is covered with the blood and everything you get this year you're going to keep it in the name of Jesus Christ I said everything you get this year you're going to keep it in the name of Jesus Christ I said everything you get this year you're going to keep it in the name of Jesus I said every door that you go through you're going to go through it and stay there in the name of Jesus now remember these words are these letters are actually alphanumeric. Somebody say alphanumeric. How many of you are tracking with me? I'm just teaching fast. How many of you are getting it? Amen. I knew I knew it because y'all are so smart. Praise the Lord. I, I'm glad God gave me a smart church. Praise God. But, but I love to teach the Word. I love to unpack these things, and you get your faith around it to receive it. Now, remember, the, the letters are and the, and the numbers, it's alphanumeric. That means all the letters have an assigned number, and the numbers have an assigned letter. Like we have a group of symbols for the A's, B's, C's, and the 1, 2, 3's, and, and they're two separate symbols, but not the Hebrews. They have the same uh, symbols for letters and numbers. That means... Uh, uh, an, an eight is a is a chet, which is a letter, and it's also a number. And the an is a seven; it's a letter, but it's also a number. And so, if if the letters have numeric value, it would only prove then that words have numeric value. And I know this is a little bit deep, but I believe you're tracking with me. We're just reviewing a little bit from last week. But I talked to you about some of the words that have the numeric value of 78. Remember, we're in the year 78, the decade of the sevens, and we're in the year of the eight, 78. And last, year, last week, we talked about the fact that bread and salt have the same numeric value as 78. And I saw in that text that, that this year, in Jesus name we're going to know like never before that Jesus is the bread hallelujah he's going to be bread bread represents the presence of God Rep Bread represents the Word of God. Bread represents Jesus. So this year, our lives are going to be filled with the presence of God. We're going to be able to claim the Word of God. Hallelujah. And we're going to know Jesus this year. It's all about Jesus. Tell your neighbor, pass the bread. Yeah, 2018 is going to be all about the bread. It's not going to be about a preacher. Glory to God. It's not going to be about a denomination. It's not going to be about a dogmatic theology. It's going to be all about the bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to have the bread of God's presence. We're going to have the bread of God's word. And we're going to have Jesus. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the evening, and Jesus in the afternoon. Hallelujah. And the good thing about the bread is you get it to go pack when you leave church. Glory to God. You don't just have to come to church to get bread. There's bread in your house, and there's bread in this house, and there's bread in you. Hallelujah. Somebody thank God that 2018 is a year of fresh bread. Come on, I said it points to miracles. I said 2018 is a year of fresh bread. But then the, the word for salt also has a numeric value in the Hebrew of 78. And the Bible said we are the salt of the earth. And what that means is this, and you study the Bible and you study ancient times, salt represented a preservative. It represented flavoring. It represented so very much to people, especially in the old days. They, 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 they were people who understood that they needed salt, and salt brought flavor to their food. And the Bible Bible said that Jesus said you are the salt of the earth that means we provide the flavor to the earth hallelujah when 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 the rapture takes place and we're out of here y'all know all the flavors gonna be gone can I get a witness 
You are the salt of the earth. We are preserving the earth right now. When the church is taken out of here, when the salt is taken out of here, the earth will no longer be preserved. The only thing that holds back the wrath of God is the salty church. Are you hearing me? That the only Because we are preserving the earth right now because God has mercy on the earth because of his people. Glory to God. So here's the deal. We are the salt, but he is the bread. We're the salt, but he's the bread. We're the salt, but he's the bread. And we're the salt of the earth, not the salt of the church. We don't sit around and salt each other. Hallelujah. You don't prove anything when you salt brothers and sisters. What you do is prove that you are a believer when you walk out of here and salt the lost. Hallelujah. How many of you want to salt the lost with the love of Jesus Christ? So... We're going to go a little bit deeper tonight. If you're ready, shout, let's go deeper. All right, all that was a review. I haven't even started preaching yet. Glory to God. Now, I was, I was studying today, and I got so caught up in this, and I'm going to teach this, and, and, and then Sunday, my goodness, I, I'm ready for you. Praise the Lord. But one of the words that has the numeric value of 78 is wise. Wise has the numeric value of 78, wise or wisdom. Now, when I was studying this, I became so excited about this year because I am claiming in this crazy jacked up world that this year we are gonna have the wisdom of the Lord. I'll say that again. I said this year, you and me, me and you, all of us, Tell your neighbor, get southern and say, oh, y'all. <laughs> Come on, that's how the southerners would say, say oh, y'all. All oh, y'all going to have the wisdom of the Lord. See, I want the wisdom of the Lord because wisdom from God goes beyond human intelligence and human understanding. I want to live a life that is not bound by my human reasoning. I want to see more than I see. I want to know more than I know. I want to understand more than I should because I have the wisdom of the Lord. See, it takes more than a textbook to give you wisdom. Mm. I better say that again. I said it takes more than a textbook to give you wisdom. I know people that have more degrees than a thermometer, but they don't have wisdom. And their lives are always in a mess. You can get knowledge from a textbook, but you get wisdom from the Lord. See, see, I know people who have so much knowledge and they're still not wise enough to apply the knowledge that they've obtained and they go from one mess to another, one problem to another, one issue to another. I know people who are knowledgeable on many fronts, but they lack wisdom. They even lack common sense. <laughs> have you ever known folks that were really smart but had no common sense? It seems like they knew so much about this and that, but they had no common sense and they lived shallow, limited lives. And, and here's the truth. The Bible said in Proverbs, it says in Proverbs 1, 5, a wise man will hear and increase, come on, learning, and a man of understanding will attain counsel, wise counsel. See, the Bible declares that a wise man will hear. That means you've got to spend more time listening than you do talking. Oh, praise the Lord, preach Pastor Rayleigh. One of the reasons many folks are unwise and continue to make stupid choices and unwise choices is because they never hear anyone but themselves. They, they never take time to listen and learn. I've learned a long time ago, sometimes the best thing you can be is quiet. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm not preaching to you, but the people behind you, on the road behind you, my goodness, they are needing this so bad. I've learned that it pays to be quiet. At my age, I probably know more than, than I've known my whole life, but I've learned to be quiet because as long as I'm talking, I'm just sharing what I already know. It's when I'm quiet and listening that I have the ability to learn. See, as long as I'm talking, I'm just talking the thing that I already know. But when I'm quiet, that's when I'm learning. Have you ever seen people, been around people, been connected to people that talk so much and what they said didn't make a whole lot of sense? And have you ever felt like saying, shut up in the name of Jesus? 
Can I talk to real people? Who, who has ever felt that anointing to just say, in the name of Jesus, shut up? Because you realize, man, you, you, the reason you're talking so foolishly is because you haven't taken the time to listen. Hear me. Here's what I found out. Often people who know the most will talk the least until they're engaged. Come on now. Very often when I, when I go to, to Bishop Jakes's uh, conventions and I, and I preach for him or teach for him, there'll be groups of thousands of people there and almost every time he'll invite Dawn and I to lunch and there'll be about six or eight of us that sit down for lunch and I'll be sitting at a table with him and Brian Houston one, one time and several of these guys and let me tell you what I was. I was quiet. You know why? Because I wanted to hear what Bishop Jakes had to say. I wanted to hear what Brian Houston had to say. Now, they engaged me, and when they engaged me, thank the Lord I had something to say. Hallelujah. I, I, at least I didn't go, duh, 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 duh. No, I actually had something to say. But, you know, I was in that moment, and I said, God, you put me at this table. Now give me the wisdom to hear what you want me to hear that will get my church and my life and my ministry to the next level for your glory. See, a wise man, the Bible said, he hears. And you can't hear unless you're listening. Tell your neighbor, listen up. The Bible says a wise man, watch this, will hear and increase. A wise man will hear and increase. Your increase is tied to what you don't know. Come on, I'm not saying you can't increase on what you know, but the next level of increase in your life is tied to what you don't know. There are things that you don't know that are critical that you need to know and you can't know unless you're listening. You can't find these things out unless you're listening. Who wants in 2018 to hear everything God has to say to you about your life, about your family, about your future? Because wisdom will bless you. This is a year of wisdom. That's what I am decreeing over my life. 2018 is a year of wisdom. Come on, declare that. Say 2018 is a year of wisdom. Hallelujah. Say 2018 is a year of wisdom. Glory to God. Wisdom that will bless you. Wisdom that will bless those that you love. Wisdom that will bring about increase. Glory to God. Increase. Somebody say increase. Uh, somebody shout increase wisdom that will bring about increase he's gonna be he'll increase your capacity to be a great parent who will if you've got kids how many of you want to be a great parent come on he'll increase your capacity to be a great parent he'll increase your ability to be able to be a wiser person of prayer he'll increase your ability to be able to pray right he'll increase your wisdom as it relates to your relationships come on somebody he'll help you be able to handle some of the knuckleheads from your husband's or wife's side of the family come on he'll give you wisdom on how to handle relationships with your children he will increase your wisdom and increase your ability to be able to find ways that bring blessings into your life prosperity into your life favor into your life. He's going to give you wisdom this year to say the right yes and the right no. He'll give you wisdom this year to discover what door is for you and what ain't for you. He'll give you wisdom this year. He'll, he'll take you beyond your own understanding and give you wisdom. Hallelujah to God. How many of you are looking for wisdom this year? Okay, that's most of you. I said, how many of you are looking for wisdom this year? Do you remember the story of Solomon? The Lord appeared to Solomon and said, what can I do for you? What do you want? Because Solomon had brought such a sacrificial offering to the Lord. He brought a thousand lambs when all that was required was one. And it so moved the heart of God that the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, now what can I do for you? And he said, just give me wisdom to govern your people. Solomon didn't ask God for money or wealth. He asked God for wisdom. And everything he had and done was an outflow of the wisdom of the Lord. See, wisdom is better than money. 
because you can have money and still be stupid. Come on, somebody. Wisdom is better than money. I know people who have money, but they don't have enough wisdom to use the money that they have for the good, and the very thing that should be a blessing to them is a bondage to them. Wisdom is better than money. Wisdom is better than uh, resources. Wisdom is better than properties. Wisdom is better than stuff, because let me tell you, if you have stuff, you can use it, but it lose it. But if you have wisdom, even if you lose it, God God's wisdom will give you the ability to get back everything that you lost. Glory to God. How many of you want to have wisdom in 2018? Come on, who wants wisdom on your job? Wisdom with your family. Somebody give God a praise if you want wisdom. Now, now, in my own life, I've depended on myself, and when I depend on myself, that's when I get in trouble. When I depend on what I know, what I'm able to articulate, what I'm able to make happen, when I lean on my own understanding, come on, that's when I get in trouble. The Bible said in Proverbs 28, he who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered. Have you ever trusted your own heart and got in deeper bondage? Oh, hallelujah. All right, just look straight ahead and act like I'm not talking to you. Have you ever trusted your own heart and got in more trouble? Man, my heart has got me in so much trouble in years gone by. I, I've hired people just because I had a tender heart. I brought people on staff because I had a tender heart, and it bit me in the backside. Come on, somebody, because I didn't lean on the wisdom of the Lord, and we can't always trust our own heart. We can't even always trust our own head. <laughs> Yes, Lord, preach Pastor Rayleigh. We can't always trust ourselves, but he who trusts in his own heart, the Bible said, is a fool. But when we lean on wisdom, glory be to God. Bring that scripture back up. He who trusts in his own heart is, is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered. This year, you're going to have wisdom, and you're going to be delivered. Hallelujah. You're going to be delivered from the attacks of the enemy. You're going to be delivered from the assault of the enemy. People are going to be delivered from poverty. They're going to be delivered from depression. They're going to be delivered from fear. You're going to be delivered from doubt. You're going to be delivered from anxiety. You're going to be delivered from all these things because you're going to walk wisely before the Lord. Somebody give God praise if you're ready for wisdom. Come on, give God a shout if you want wisdom this year. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you're going to want to hang out with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to want to hang out with me because I'm going to have wisdom this year. I'm submitting my heart to the Lord. Now, I believe the Bible says you shall decree a thing and it will be established. That means the power of death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Some people are in trouble because they have spoken their way into the situations that they're in. They constantly speak doubt, fear, and negativity. When you need to speak faith, you need to speak faith. 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 You don't speak your circumstances. You speak the word. You speak the word of faith. Hallelujah. The Bible said you will decree a thing and it will be established. And, and when you begin to speak things, hallelujah, and declare things, and it changes the way you react and the way you behave, then the things that you are speaking in faith will begin to manifest in your life. So we're going to declare some things, and it's going to be established this year for me. And who's going to see some things established this year for you? So put your hand on your own heart and say, in 2018, say, in 2018, I will walk in the wisdom, come on, say wisdom of the Lord. It will bring favor, increase, insight, and supernatural abundance in every area, in every area, in every area of my life. Raise your hands and say, thank you for wisdom, Lord and give the Lord a praise in here. Come on, the Bible said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. Thank God for wisdom. Now, uh, we're not going to, I wrote this in my notes, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. We're not going to be dumb this year. Tell your neighbor, we're not going to be dumb this year. They, somebody didn't say that to you. Say, just say, at least I'm not. Come on. One of your neighbors wouldn't talk to you. How many of you are not going to be dumb this year, but you're going to be wise? Amen. 
Now, there's another word that I want to talk about just for a couple minutes. I don't know how deep I'll be able to get into this, but the word translated well or good has the numeric value of 78. Look at your neighbor and say good. Say mm-mm. Good. Amen. I'm ready to have a good year. Anybody want to have a good year? Now, now, when I read this, to be quite honest with you, I thought to myself, do I want to have a good year? I mean, I'm preconditioned that I don't have a good year. I have a great year. I have an awesome year. I have an unbelievable year. My year is so good. My year is so great. It's going to be so awesome. It's going to be incredible. But I got to thinking about what good means in the Bible. And, and the Bible talks about the fact that Jesus created the heavens and the earth. And every time he did something he liked, he said it was good. And I thought, man, if good is good enough for God, good is good enough for me. Amen. If God thinks it's good, then it must be stinking incredible. So whatever God's definition of good is, can I say this? Can I get country? Can I get South Alabama? Whatever God's definition of good good is, it is the bomb diggity. Tell your neighbor, this year is going to be the bomb diggity. Hallelujah. Who's ready for a year that is good? Come on, how many of you would like... This is God. God is almighty. God is incredible. How many of you know when some people pay you a compliment, it don't mean a whole lot, but when somebody else pays you a compliment, you're like, mm, yeah, that's, not, that's strong right there. And if God turns around and says it's good, then it must be something really phenomenal because God, he defines everything superlative that we cannot even comprehend or understand or articulate. So I want to have a good year, the same kind of good that God said it is good when he created the heavens and the earth. He was so taken by what he had done. At one point, he said it is very good. Is there anybody ready for a very good year? Come on, make a little noise if you're ready for a very good year. Come on, you've had some drama. You've had some problems in years gone by, but this year it shall be well. It shall be good. Glory to God. Now, good in the Bible, it means to be well-placed. It means to be well-pleasing. It means to do well and to live, watch this, with gladness and joy. To live with gladness and joy. Mm. I love that right there. I'm going to live with gladness and joy. Ha! Huh. I'm practicing. I'm laughing a lot this year. Yes, I am. Aren't you? See, see, I saw this and I said, Lord, I'm ready for this kind of year. Even when the Lord created the earth, he said it was good. He was, he was happy about it. And, and, and I'm believing that this year is going to be a year filled with gladness and joy. When we get to the end of 2018, sisters and brothers, I want you to look back on the year and say it was a good year. I want you to finish a year and say, man, I'm finishing with gladness and joy. I want you to get in December and say, I'm finishing this year with gladness and joy. Look at your neighbor and declare it in faith. Say, Say, neighbor, this year I am finishing with gladness and joy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not like 2016, not like 2014, not like 2017. Somebody give God a praise if you're going to finish with gladness and joy. Gladness and joy. Gladness and joy. Gladness and joy. Get happy, Jim Rayleigh. Gladness and joy. Get happy, Dawn Rayleigh. Gladness and joy. Oh, glory to God. I'm about to bless my own self. Hallelujah. I've got faith for a good year because I serve a good God. I've got faith for a good year because I serve a good God who loves me. Not because I deserve everything he does for me, but because he's good. Praise the Lord. Somebody say gladness and joy. The Bible said in Isaiah 51, 11, that the redeemed, the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to sing, come with Zion with singing. I'm going to sing this year. If you don't like my singing, that's tough, but I'm going to sing, hallelujah. I'm going to sing, hallelujah. And the Bible said everlasting joy will be on their heads. The head represents the mind. What does that mean? That means your mind is not going to be filled in Jesus' name with doubt. It's not going to be filled with negativity. 
It's not going to be filled with depression. It's not going to be filled with anger. Glory to God. Who am I talking to? It's not going to be filled with worry or anxiety, but your head is going to be full of joy. Glory to God. When the enemy comes in and tries to bring you depression, joy is going to take that depression over. Joy is going to be on your head. Hallelujah. The Bible said it's going to be on your head. Joy, 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 joy. I want you to see me in the spirit. Joy is going to be sitting on top of my head every day. I'm not going to let my past rob me of my joy. I'm not going to let the things that I haven't seen yet rob me of my joy. I'm not going to let my problems rob me of my joy. I got joy on my mind. I'm going to get joy in my heart. I'm going to have joy that goes beyond Sunday morning. I'm going to get joy that goes beyond just a good feeling or a good movie or a good date or a good day or a good opportunity. Joy is going to be on my head. That means when I wake up, it's joy. When I walk through the day, it's joy. That doesn't mean that I go, don't want to go through trouble. But when I go through it, I'll go through it joyfully, knowing that the Lord is on my side and no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Who wants joy in your head this year and in your mind? Everlasting joy will be upon their head. Come on, y'all are going too fast in the back. Watch this. With everlasting joy on their head, they shall obtain joy and gladness. Remember the, the definition that I gave you? Gladness and joy. Joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing. One translation says sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I declare that joy is going to chase away sorrow out of your life this year. I declare that it has to flee in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody give God a clap and a shout if you believe that. I said give the Lord a shout if you believe that. Are you ready to make a faith confession? Put your hand on your heart and say, this will be a good year. Shout it out. Say, this will be a good year. Sorrow and mourning will run away from me. And joy and gladness will be on my mind and in my heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise if that's you. Man, I could sing a song so old that none of y'all would know it. That y'all wouldn't know this song. You wouldn't know it. In my heart there rings a melody, rings a melody of heaven's harmony. One man knows it. Two, two. If you know that song, wave at me. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of joy. I'm telling you, in my heart there's going to ring a melody. And it's going to be joy. I really didn't know that song, but Pastor Troy taught it to me. Ha, ha, ha. You know, them old timers, they sang some songs back in the day. <laughs> Pastor Troy just had a birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor Troy. He's lots older than me, at least for now, because his birthday's January 16th and my birthday's 23rd. Is that right? So he turned 55 and I'm about to turn 25. Praise the Lord. But how many of you are ready for gladness and joy this year? Glory to God. But here's something a little bit deeper. The word good also means to be well-placed. And I was thinking about that this year, and I said, God, I want to be right where you want me to be. I want to be right where you want me to be. And the Lord began to speak to me. He said, I'm going to have you right at the chat. I'm going to have you right at the doorway. I'm going to have you right in front of where you're supposed to be. He said, you're not going to miss it. You're going to be well placed. Somebody say, I shall be well placed. Yeah, it's going to be a year when I am well placed. I'm not stressing about my there. Wherever my there is, I is. Hallelujah. Wherever my there is, that's where I'm going to be. I'm not stressing about my there. I'm not stressing about where I am not. I'm going to be where the Lord would have me to be. I will be well placed. I will be well placed. 
the Lord began to speak to me prophetically. God will place me right where he wants me. I don't have to worry about where he's placing other people. I don't have to trip if somebody else gets placed. No, I know that I'm going to be exactly in the place where God wants me to be. This year, I'm going to be in a place to walk through every door that God has for me to walk through. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to trip about it. I don't have to make it happen. I don't have to, I don't have to manipulate my way there. No, God is going to make sure I am well placed. Tell your neighbor, I will be well placed this year. I will be right where God wants me to be. I'm about to throw my pen at somebody. If you don't say amen, I'm going to be well placed. Hallelujah. Come on, if you sell real estate, if you have a business, and wherever you work, you're going to be well placed. God's going to put you in the right position. You'll get raises you didn't know were coming. You'll get bonuses in the name of Jesus. You'll get opportunities. You're going to be well placed to be salt and light. You're going to be well Somebody give God praise. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to be well placed. I'm going to be well placed. I'm going to be well placed. That means I don't stress out. That means I don't worry. That means I don't have to make it happen. That means the God of Israel is going to place me where he wants me to be at the time he wants me to be there. I won't be late. I won't be early, but I'll be right on time because God's got a place. He's got a time. He's got a position, and he's got a man. Hallelujah. And when you get all that together, God will put you where he wants you to be. I shall be well placed. Tell your neighbor, I shall be well placed. I ain't tripping, I ain't worried, I ain't uptight, I ain't upset. I shall be well placed. Glory be to God. Give the Lord a praise in here. Come on, people are listening on the radio right now. They'll be listening tomorrow. They're about to wreck their car because they're feeling this thing. Somebody give God a shout if you're going to be well placed. Glory be to God. I'll be in position. Huh? Because I have wisdom to hear him. This year I'll be well placed. Somebody say well placed. I'll go through every new door the Lord has for me. I'll experience every new thing God has for me in the name of Jesus. 2018, I heard the Lord say this, and I believe this was so prophetic. It was so prophetic to me that I actually released it on my social media. And it was so intense. I put it on Twitter. I put it on Facebook and on Instagram, and I have thousands of followers but I felt like I needed to breathe this into the atmosphere. Because when you hear a prophetic word, baby, you need to grasp it. And if it's for others, you need to release it. And I heard the Lord say that this is a year of divine positioning. Ah. Glory to God. How many of you need some divine positioning in your life? Come on, make some noise if you need some divine positioning in your life. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. I said make some noise if you need divine positioning in your life. Say, I shall be well placed. Okay, everybody stand to your feet because I'm going to speak over you the word that the Lord gave me. Raise up your hands. This is for you. Now, you got to have wisdom this year. you got to be willing to hear what the Lord says. You gotta be willing to walk this thing out. You gotta be willing to live what the Bible says. Come on, you can't live crazy and then claim the prophetic promise of God. Say amen, somebody. But hold up your hands right now. I hear the Lord say, here's the prophetic word. I hear the Lord say 2018 is a year of divine positioning for you. Somebody say, yes, Lord. I hear the Lord say 2018 is a year of divine positioning for you. As you seek God's direction, you won't wonder what you're missing because of improper placement. I hear the Lord say, do not fret. 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 Somebody say, I will not fret. Somebody shout, I will not fret. 
For the Lord said, God puts you in the right places. God puts you there at the right time. And the Lord of hosts says in 2018, you will be supernaturally positioned. You will be supernaturally positioned for your powerful purpose. Now, if you receive that prophetic word, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yes and amen. Somebody say 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 yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. How does God speak? He speaks through his word. He speaks through signs. He speaks through wonders. He speaks through circumstances. He speaks, listen, he speaks through numbers and he speaks through his prophets. And tonight I, be, I rise as a prophet of God to declare that this is a year of divine positioning. Now give God a praise if you believe it. Somebody say, I believe it. Say, I believe it. And go one step further and say, I receive it. You can believe it and not receive it. But you can't receive it if you don't believe it. You can believe it and not receive it, but you can't receive it if you don't believe it. Somebody say, I believe it. And I receive it. This is a year of divine positioning, says the Lord. This is a year you have wisdom. This is a year of bread. Come on now. This is a year of salt. This is a year of wisdom. Ain't that rich? And this is a year of divine positioning. The good, the well-placed. We're gonna look back on 2018 when it's over with joy and gladness. Hallelujah. Somebody get ready. He's gonna turn your mourning into dancing. Hallelujah. He's gonna turn your sorrow into joy giving you a new direction. Hallelujah. Now, this Sunday, this sacred Sunday, I'm excited about it. I can't hardly wait, to be honest with you. I know you're praying about what the Lord's going to have you do. Don and I have already set aside our sacrificial seat. We were praying. The Lord gave us a sacrificial number, and we're giving it in faith. We always do every year. There's something about this year that we're feeling. This coming Sunday, man, we're gonna, it's different because we sing, we pray, we consecrate this whole year. Somebody say consecrate. When you consecrate a thing, you set it aside for the Lord. How many of you want this year to be all about Jesus? Come on, that's what we're doing this year. Some people give a day's wage, some people give a week's wage, some people give a month's wage. You give sacrificially. You give in faith. That's what I'm doing. I get nothing out of this but the joy of giving just like you. But I'm attaching my faith to it because this Sunday, we're going to present our church to the Lord. How many of you want God to have his way in your church? We're going to present our families to the Lord. Who wants God to have his way in your family? Come on. We're going to present our sacred season seed to the Lord. How many of you want God to have his way in your finances and in, the, and in your blessings? I do. And then first, then the, the most important thing that we're going to present to the Lord is ourselves. Who's going to give yourself to the Lord fresh this year? Slip up your hand. Sing, Pastor John. I reach my hands to the heavens. I lift my eyes where my help comes from I look to you my rock my healer I trust in you I reach my hands I reach my
I declare that 2018 will be a year where God does the good. It'll be a good year. It'll be a good year. Somebody say a good year. It'll be a year in Jesus' name where God does good things. And I decree and declare that 2018, you will be well placed and well positioned and right where God wants you to be. And you will see every open doorway and everything God has for you, you will see it and you will not miss it. If you're ready, give God a shout. Come on, give him a shout. I hope you enjoyed Bible class. I love you. I'll see you Sunday morning. God bless you. See you, Pastor John.